Hey guys, today I'm going to bring back an old tradition of me picking a card before the Amaket releases and hopefully the card goes up during some period of time. I'm picking a Johnny on Yielding. Now first thing to note, he does cost 6 mana and he is not just Elspeth. I picked Elspeth before she doubled, tripled in price. Sun's champion and people said six was too much. Obviously, that's no longer that true. A Johnny is at six. The reason I have hesitated with him in the past because he's two colors. He's green white. Planeswalkers that are two colors typically do not see that much play in standard unless the deck, unless the meta falls perfectly and it was like, hey, Planeswalker, you do exactly what we need you to do. And our decks are white and green. So if he was just white, four and double white, he would probably already have seen play. But because he, you have to play both colors, very limited what type of deck can play him in. I saw the new Nissa, and I'm thinking Bant, or if not Bant, green white. Or green white seems good enough to me because you have Gideon Outlive's end card, you have the other Gideon, you have the Nissa that puts out plant tokens, which is relatively good. And then you have another Nyssa, the Forgotten Nyssa. I don't know if you want to play that in your deck, but you could. A Johnny's Oaf is r relatively good for Planeswalkers. And one of the things, Gideon's Oaf is very good. Nyssa's Oaf is very good. I could see a Planeswalker deck, although we haven't seen one. They are pushing these Planeswalkers as, hey, so much to make a deck. Nothing would make Wizards of the Coast more happy than if a Planeswalker deck won the Pro Tour. A, there would be just so much hype, and B, they would be promoting exactly what they promote, Planeswalkers. Why do they need to promote Planeswalkers? Maybe it's because of casual players, maybe it's because of the Magic movie, who, who knows if that's actually real, maybe it's because Magic Digital Next, but there is a reason they don't promote any of the gods. There is a reason they don't promote this instant spell or this sorcery or even Liliana of the Veil. They need to promote recent planeswalkers to get people to play standard. And nothing would do that better than that than a planeswalker deck in the top eight. A viable deck. I feel like if the viable deck is green white, they will play this card. The other thing to know is the card doesn't really have any downside. It's under $3. I'll show you a few examples of it on TCG Player. Screenshot taken today with the price being under $3. So $2.18 shipping, $0.99 cents makes it over $3.99. Uh, $2.42 is the lowest we see here. Um, but there's actually one where you have 10 of them and they're like two eighty, ten 10 of them and you get free shipping if you spend more than $25 and two at $2.80, you buy 10 of them for $28, you're good to go. You get the free shipping and that's what it costs. It costs $2.80. Uh, you have 268 with shipping included. So if you want to just buy a single copy for ED8s, the card is a $3 Planeswalker. The last time we saw a sub $4 Planeswalker which was not part of a dual deck, obviously the dual deck really kills the Planeswalker price, was Tibble. This card is better than Tibble, and I don't believe it should be at the current price. And even if you're stuck with this card for a while, there's no downside. I mean, still Planeswalker, you can still trade it away to any casual player who's going to want it. And it's a beefy Planeswalker. It's a Johnny who's getting more and more popular. I didn't expect him to be so popular, but he really has done, they have done a good job promoting him. And now I even like him. You know, uh, he was one of my least favorite Planeswalkers. So 268 with shipping included, and then we will keep scrolling down. Uh, here, I think this is the 284, and he has 10 of them. And if you buy 10 of them, you don't need more than like two play sets, right? You don't need more than 10 of them because at most you're going to play with one of them and then maybe trade one for some better card if it does go up in price. So I like it. You know, I really, really, truly like this card quite a bit. I just don't feel like it can continue to go down. Like where would it go down to? Like sub $2 for a Mythic Planeswalker in Standard? 
I mean, when it was like ten, fifteen dollars, I didn't like it because it's two colors. I don't want to be in two colors. But now, I I'm seeing the two colors as very, very strong. White because of Gideon, green because of Nissa, and I'm looking at the oaths of Gideon, Nissa, and I'm, I've been I want to play this deck actually. I want to play this deck, and probably Magic Duels, and I feel like it would be very good. I'm super excited. Uh, it's been a while since I've been excited about speculation, but this one seems like a honestly no brainer because okay, you bought a few planeswalkers. It's three dollars. You bought them at three dollars. What's the worst that can happen to a Johnny at three dollars that hasn't been reprinted again? It can only really go up, and I think there was another Johnny, a Johnny Steadfast, that was exactly like this one. I don't know if it ever got to three dollars, but it fell quite a bit, and it still came. Anyway, it is raining outside, so I will leave you with that. Leave me a comment below. What do you guys think, or do you think there's a better speculation? Uh, write a comment below, and then I guess in two months, four months, we'll check up on the speculation and see how I did. Oh, the last speculation I made was Sahili Ra. That turned out okay for totally luck reasons, but even, but just looking at Sahili, I was like, huh, sub $5, went to $20, 25 at the max retail, and that went okay, so it doesn't take much, it just takes one really fun deck, and I think a Johnny will be part of that deck. Anyway, that's it guys, bye.